It's been said that from the beginning, you know the end, and that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. In this case, it's about neither of those things. It's about how much pain a 9-year-old game can cause you. Can you beat Halo Reach without taking any damage? Reach begins with a cutscene showing the blue and yellow guy arriving at an outpost or something, and listening in on a conversation between Carter and Holland. There's some foreshadowing, an air ride, and taking Call of Duty back to its roots with boots on the ground gameplay. I was almost immediately bothered by the fact that the crosshair isn't centered on the screen, but like with one of the holes in my sock, I eventually stopped being a bitch and got over it. Unparalleled destruction was revealed. Nobody knew what forces of evil were responsible for such reprehensible actions. After meeting with the civilians and attempting to murder them, we encountered the Covenant for the first time. The way this run works is rather simple. Any time I take damage, I reload the last checkpoint. This forces me to get through any situation without taking damage since I can't save scum my way through it like I could in Fallout or Skyrim by making a new save every 7 seconds. Also, something new you'll notice on the screen is a timer and a death counter. The timer is self-explanatory, and the death counter isn't necessarily for deaths. It's for the number of times I took damage and had to reset. I try to approximate how long certain difficult portions of the game take, but this provides more context. And if you're wondering, yes, it was a nightmare to add the death counter. I regretted it almost immediately. Carter and I rode off a cliff when I tried to send him and George to their death. It worked the second time, we fought more Covenant, and rode to another area. The aliens beat us there. This revealed one of the annoying parts about Reach that would be present throughout the rest of the game, the unfortunate placement of checkpoints. In this instance, the checkpoint is when you're still in the air, so failing means you wait until you land over and over and over again. It doesn't seem like it would be that bad, but when you fail here, you're waiting 25 seconds just for the chance to try again. The upside to combat in general is that everything you're facing fires plasma-based weapons. The projectiles are fast, but not so fast that they're impossible to dodge. In close quarters, it's a fruitless endeavor, like putting the pieces of a broken coffee mug back together. I miss that mug. When there's some distance though, it's more than possible to evade their shots. We had to wait a bit for Pussy to hack her way through the door controls. You can tell she's the hacker because she has a robot hand. I took damage here multiple times. After several failures, I decided to just sit back and let the other Spartans do most of the work. They're Spartans, they can't die. Another cutscene advanced the story and had me almost getting stabbed in the chest with an energy dagger. Potential damage from cutscenes doesn't count. The patented forklift technique failed me inside this place. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this was 343's fault. There's no reason why this shouldn't have worked. I continued fighting my way through the grunts and elites without too much of an issue. One elite had a concussion rifle, they're usually the ones you want to take out first, as they don't have to hit you directly to do damage. In some other game, perhaps one made by a developer that loves cliches, they'd have had this lady who just lost her father become part of the team. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Carter told the big holographic cheese what the name of this mission is, and we're onto Oni Sword Base. Due to the sensitive nature of Sword Base, those in charge of nuking the planet decided that destroying the base and starting fresh wasn't an option. You've gotta punch down trees and mine for cobblestone, it's a whole thing. Nobody wants to do that. There are not an insignificant number of grunts, jackals, and elites here that need to be safely removed from the premises before we can proceed. In theory, this should not have been difficult. Go slow, don't take risks, attack from a distance. All great strategies that didn't really work out for me. I didn't finish adding the death counter to this video before I started this script, so I have no idea what the actual number is for how many attempts this took. But it was more than one, which makes it too many. Eventually, I got through it, picked up the target locator, and was flooded with memories of using this to farm medals and experience back when Reach released 9 years ago. I got hit by Wraith projectiles a few times, tried to take out the big ship in the sky with the target locator, failed took out my rage on this guy's head, and managed to destroy two wraiths and a friendly warthog with one bombardment. There was something here that needed to be activated to help defend Reach. I spent a considerable amount of time here. There weren't that many enemies here, certainly fewer than I faced at the beginning of the mission, but I just kept failing. Primarily because I had to immediately flee from where I'd gotten the checkpoint, due to a Covenant ship dropping off enemies soon after the checkpoint reloaded. I also only had 5 shots with a sniper rifle at my disposal to get me inside the building where there were DMRs. 
I got the anti-air gun activated, picked off the remaining forces, and pressed onward. I was given a warthog to drive to my next objective, and it was here I made a decision. Potentially a pretty stupid one. The side of the screen sorta of lights up when you're in a vehicle and an enemy bullet hits you. Your health bar doesn't decrease, but it's still technically damage. I think in other Halos I ignored that, I said that because your damage isn't decreasing it doesn't count or something, but I didn't do that here. Had I known what was in store for me later in the campaign, I would have done things very differently. This domesticated human living perimeter wasn't that bad. The jackals with needle rifles are always a concern. The needle rifle is one of the few covenant weapons that you can't really dodge shots from. I got startled by two grunts and jumped off a building, which sprained my left ankle. I consulted a doctor about it who flunked out of medical school and took his advice by killing myself. With a goss hog freshly picked from the warthog tree, my team of disposable marines and I rode towards combat. On the other side of the Hyperion barge were more covenant, including hunters, that I fought for the first time. The only real problem with hunters is that they exist. One even had the nerve to knock over the forklift. Their attacks can be dodged easily enough if you're careful, and a few shots into their orange gunk with a shotgun can kill them. Up in the Oni building, I brute forced my way through three kinds of enemies until I found the breach. I spent longer here than I should have. A phantom is hovering nearby, but the real bitch is the invisible elite. I figured my best chance at taking them out was to just shoot rockets at the box while also trying to knock it down into the darkness below. Once we took out the phantom, the boys upstairs did their part in destroying the big ship and the sneaky stealth mission began. There wasn't anything crazy in this mission. Covenant were held up in an area called the Dark Zone. It's kinda like Chalk Zone, but there was no chalk to be found, so they called it the Dark Zone. Seeing as this is an infiltration and recon mission, there were these giant elephant sloth monsters that were unfriendly towards me, probably because I had just chucked a grenade their way. They're aliens, they don't understand that that's what friends do to each other on Earth. Bacon can back me up on this. Several checkpoints later, we arrived at the Hydro Plant, where, despite what I just said, a solid amount of enemy aliens were located. Skirmishers on the rooftops were among the first to go. You don't fuck around with needle rifles unless you have to. More elites and such showed up, I died a few times, and we found the pylon, which was powering the Dark Zone. I paid the ultimate price for trying to knock a forklift off a cliff, cautiously fought through the enemy forces, defended June while he planted explosives on the pylon, pressed deeper into the Dark Zone, and finally found the Heart of Darkness, a Covenant landing zone. Tip of the spear was next. The one-armed robot was driving, which was the first sign that things would go wrong. The very beginning of this mission could have gone bad, had I missed the almost hand-holding the game does to show you that you can stun vehicles with a grenade launcher. As usual, I ditched the rocket hog because it just had a big ol' target painted all over my spine. I did, however, use that hog's turret to do surprisingly little against the Covenant guarding this bird beef looking turret. Destroying the energy thing inside the gun building was child's cake, but I had a bit of a problem rounding this corner. There was a ghost to deal with, skirmishers with needle rifles, a phantom was floating around somewhere, and a wraith. Wraiths by themselves aren't all that, which Nickelodeon rebooted in 2009 because the dead can't be allowed to rest in peace. The wraith gunner can still shoot when the wraith itself is stunned. And just like the ghost of Halo's past, the turrets fire so quickly that avoiding their shots is near impossible. After ditching a truck in midair and letting it splatter a marine, I began securing the mining facility. Most of what's on the glorified scaffolding are grunts and jackals. Precision weapons make them a joke, but the elites that did gymnastics as kids are frustrating as fuck to kill. Especially this one red prick. He was a general or something, a high value target I guess. He used our own technology against me, could give an undamed Olympic swimmer a run for their money, and was a considerable bitch to kill. To the point where I don't even know if I killed him. I blasted someone with something but I never found his body. Another AA gun sent me a postcard requesting to be destroyed, and I happily obliged. My attacks were borderline worthless. I got lucky that I had two shots left in the grenade launcher. Friendly forces were dropped off to help. The implication that I couldn't handle things on my own was insulting, so I ran them all over, spent a few lives killing everything around this rock, took to the skies with a grenade launcher in an on-rails shooter section, and got blasted out of the sky. The Spire is one of the Covenant's <coughs> teleporter and shield generator arrays. Whatever the fuck that means. I don't care for this sci-fi shit, I'm not a nerd. My health is somewhat depleted, but it was already depleted when the mission started, therefore it doesn't count since I can't do anything about it. I got my claws on a Ford Focus rifle that reminded me of the big turret from earlier. Getting into the spire took a bit of trial and error. Then I rode up to the top 
accidentally wasted one of my grenades, took out the world's toughest grunts, did the cliché jump to the chopper even though I literally have a fucking jetpack. Then the UNSC ship, Grafton, took damage. Good, it deserved it. Grafton is a dumb name. Everyone but me took off their helmets to show how desperate the situation is. I can't take off mine because my face technically doesn't even exist. Our objective is space. To get to space, we'd either need to do more drugs than you can even imagine, or we'd need to fight through the Covenant to get to the ship birthing yard. This marine disrespected the dead, so I made him dead, and I was in space. I'm gonna be real with you. This was horrible. Easily the worst part of the game. There are a couple problems. The first is entirely my fault. I thought the missiles that lock onto enemy ships were more effective than the cannon. They were not, and I wouldn't discover that until I suffered a whole lot. The other problem stems from the nature of this mission. You're in a ship, fighting other ships in space, in a ship, in space. Technically, the issue is that you have no way of dodging attacks. You can dodge them if they're coming from in front of you, but if they're coming from the sides or the rear, you're fucked. Constantly boosting and using evasive maneuvers does help, but it doesn't eliminate the problem entirely. You also have no health bar, so I just assumed that any time the red arrows appeared on screen, I took damage. After spending more time than I thought was humanly possible, I swapped to the cannon and everything changed. It was amazingly effective, still not at all easy though. Eventually, the Banshees were destroyed, and Seraphs took their place as the enemies over the planet. Far fewer of them existed, but they had energy shields that needed to be depleted before you could damage them, making them far more time consuming to destroy. After the first wave were dealt with, a combination of Banshees and Seraphs stormed the atmosphere like Normandy. I guess that there were more ships this time around than the first two waves combined. I can't even begin to describe how much I hated this portion of the game. I hated it so much that I eventually just gave up. If you fly as low as possible, you don't die or have a timer or anything like that. You're just sort of pushed back up. Get into a corner as low as possible, and with the help of a pair of headphones wrapped around the controller, you can fly down indefinitely and wait for the battle to come to its natural conclusion. After a brief cutscene, our target revealed itself. A Covenant ship had defenses that needed to be destroyed before we could get inside. I spent a while trying to destroy all the ships flying around, gave up, and started round 2 of the waiting game. This time I did flips, it was a fun time. Once all the ships were gone, I could spend far too long trying to find the engines that needed to be damaged before I could land on the ship and never have to pilot a saber in Halo Reach again. Once inside the ship, several elites were waiting for me and increased my death counter more than a few times. This area realistically should have been over quicker than it was. Surprisingly, the low gravity was more of a hindrance than a handful of help. The Marines and I, one of which was probably a reference to Rooster Teeth, but I was and still am, too lazy to look it up to see if it's true, ravaged the elites on our way to the bridge. They sunk another one of our battleships, so we had to do things the old fashioned way. The map room bothered me, quite a few elites all over the place, several could be taken out stealthily, but the screaming alerted the others, who were not thrilled about watching their friends and brothers be stabbed to death by a metal man wielding a shotgun. But metal man prevailed, the landing room was retreated to and secured with a surprisingly few number of deaths, and George sacrificed himself so that Reach may survive. Spoiler alert, George sucks and died for nothing. Exodus takes us back to a simpler time, when suicidal grunts were killing innocent civilians. My health was low again here for the same reason it was low in the Spire mission. Nothing could be done about it. Tradition dictates that I get stuck in a spot where damage is inflicted the second I respawn. Thankfully, it wasn't very far into the mission since I had to restart it. I had the option of restoring my health, but I kept taking damage shortly after doing it so I pussied out and started using everyone's favorite armor ability, Armor Lock. Brutes are here and are attacking citizens. Their inefficiency was bothering me, so I killed them myself. The Brutes can be tough, but just like Donkey Kong, can be killed in 1-2 to two headshots after their helmet is shot off. I got an achievement for something. Used a needler for the first time in this game, rode an elevator, and traversed the cargo port with a jetpack. Marines did a lot of the work while I picked off Brutes from a distance, missed multiple point-blank plasma grenade throws, several of my Marines died while I was busy not caring whether they lived or died. A little ways up ahead, I gave a rocket launcher to one and a sniper rifle to the other. They would have infinite ammo with them, and those two were the only ones to respect me enough to not be dead. Securing the landing pad was not in any way difficult, thanks in part to rocket launcher guy. Then, once again, things got terrible. Any on-rail section is going to be a nightmare. Ignore that one from earlier in the game, just pretend it didn't happen. 
The issue here is Banshees. There are several of them, and taking them out before they have a chance to attack you is difficult. Sometimes, their shots hit the bird but don't tear through its wings. But only sometimes. The only way to know for sure what they'll do is to destroy them before they can do anything. I spent around 10 minutes here, which makes it seem like it wouldn't be that bad. It was, don't let the numbers fool you. Algebra is a lie. Write that on your test and tell the teacher I said they're wrong. Next came the batteries that had to be charged or rigged to explode. In theory, this would be easy. Ammo was plentiful, and it's a wide open area that can be approached in a number of ways. Yeah, I kept trying to charge headfirst into a couple brutes. I don't remember how many times I failed. It was quite a few. Then I ignored both them and the wraith, got a checkpoint on the bridge, armed the second battery, pushed in the alien brains with my bullets, fired the missiles, and we're on to New Alexandria, another mission that involves flying. This mission started off strong, when I couldn't figure out how to fly, and almost fell out of the sky. Once I got a handle on it, the Falcon turned out to be far superior to the Saber. Banshees are a complete joke as long as you're moving. Inside the hospital, an engineer was constructing additional pylons for the Covenant infesting the multiple floors I forced my way through. The Brutes, guarding the orange activate triangle, proved to be annoying to kill without a precision weapon. Elites with jetpacks were pretty annoying too. These Falcon sections are hardly even worth talking about, given how easy they are. Another Covenant jammer was hiding out inside Sinovit. Not sure if that's a real word, but whatever. Just like most other open spaces, I kept taking damage here. I refused to accept that this could be my fault. The jammer was deep inside a building, which was supposedly a trap. There were like two things that came after me. If it was a trap, it was a shitty trap. A few rooftop turrets were destroyed, the city looked a little weird, and I entered Club Herrera to destroy the third jammer. Four hunters were the bosses inside this one, and didn't put up much of a fight. One startled me and bopped me with his plasma. Not much else happened in there. I left, destroyed more roof shit, another cutscene happened, Cat was careless, got shot in the head, and the package was next. There are multiple Covenant anti-air towers that must be destroyed. The initial area was handled with minimal issues. There were multiple hover tower things on the path to the actual towers. This entire mission took longer than it had any right to. At first, I didn't use the tank. I had a fuel rod cannon who needs a tank. That mindset didn't last very long. Now you'd think that with a tank, this would be easy. But I have a knack for making things harder than they should be. If any shot hit the tank, I counted it as damage. Imagine for a second what kind of a problem that would present. You're in the slowest moving vehicle in the game that is also a massive target for enemy fire. You see a ghost and it fires. You're so slow that even if you shoot it the second you see it, you don't have enough time to evade its shot. It took me almost 20 minutes to get to the first tower. I looked up a legendary playthrough just for a comparison. It took this hokey bird 428 guy not even 5 minutes to get to that exact same spot. The towers themselves took a real pounding from the scorpion, but couldn't fight back, so death was inevitable. Remember what I just said about ghosts? I was preparing you for this part. There's like 4 ghosts here and they were not fun. But after many, many, many resets, I failed to put the tank in the sword base, met up with Elmo and Quarter, who were already taking the fight to the elites, proceeded up the wheelchair accessible ramps leading to the upper levels of the buildings. That's usually how buildings work. When you go up, you go up, and got deja vu from this area. This one elite in particular took a ridiculous number of headshots to die. Right after the all is lost moment, a secret passageway opened up, we rode a trolley down into the iceberg and played Tower Defense 5 with Catherine Halsey. What's weird is that I remember playing this mission on Legendary with my friends, and it was a real bitch to complete. I couldn't be bothered to see if that's true for the Master Chief Collection, but by god, I was gonna throw my body off the cliff to my death until I got it. I never got it and gave up. I remember being annoyed at my antics when I was adding the death counter. What I don't remember is how many times I killed myself. More than 10, less than 30, probably. I gave up and killed them all the old fashioned way rode a mongoose through a canyon, and watched as the Covenant threw everything they had at us. And of course, when I say us, I'm excluding me. I was playing janitor and cleaned up all the grunts that landed. Emil and I jumped the gap, and by the time we found an alternate route through the caves, I could spell, this town ain't big enough backwards. I can't do it now, though. Stop smiling, idiot, I'm not doing it. After Carter played Sudoku with the Scarab, what remained of Noble Team was swarmed by drones. You might expect this to have been difficult. I called you an idiot for a reason, because this wasn't hard at all. I didn't take damage once here. Continuing towards Pillar of Autumn didn't get very much harder than that canyon. 
I had a sniper rifle and was so far away that the enemies gave about as much of a shit about me as Bethesda does about making another good Fallout game. That's right, I can't go one video without mentioning them. Farther on up the road, I contemplated jumping into the orange sludge to see if I'd die, but instead decided to be mildly annoying by not satisfying my own curiosity got double spanked by a pair of hunters, eventually murdered them for hurting my bubble, and the final assault began. I've known since the beginning that this ending portion of Reach would be a nightmare, but not any nightmare. It would be like one of the nightmares I had when I was little that was basically just a fucking kaleidoscope, but every time I had it I would get sick the next day. What does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. I don't know what it means. Regardless, the Covenant sends pretty much everything after me. A dozen or so brutes and countless grunts right at the start. At one point, I blew my own mind with my strategy of sitting on top of a tower with my defense bubble. I took damage about a second after it popped. A little while, after I missed my jump and died, I noticed that the game had fucked me. A bunch of DMRs in their crate thing had been knocked into the void out of reach. My 15 or so DMR shots were all I had to work with. The grenade rifle was not as effective against anything as I would have liked. After dying multiple times, I once again played it safe by hiding in a corner. I stayed in that area for about 15 minutes and soon discovered that it would not be like the space mission. I would have to get off my ass and take care of business. I got myself stuck behind a rock when I tried to hide again. There were two high ranking brutes nearby. One just up the stairs with a fuel rod cannon and the other up the other stairs to the right with a giant magnetic hammer. The brute with a gun was a tough motherfucker. It took like three headshots with a sniper rifle to bring him down. But because I suck at landing headshots, I opted for the grenade launcher, which was arguably worse than a plasma pistol. Several minutes of dying later, I retreated to the left with a group of marines who were being exceptionally worthless. From there, I made my way inside the central building and eventually found shotguns and magnums. I held out there for a while, camping near the doors with the shotgun, killing anything that came near me. One brute dropped a fuel rod that I picked up and put to good use. Soon, all that remained were jackals. Somehow these jackals took 10 grenades and still didn't die. Then I took damage and the brutes were back. The shotgun did enough damage to stun them, allowing for a second shot. And after so much suffering, the end was in sight. The pelican arrived. Captain Keys took my package. I agreed to stay behind against my will. Emil got stabbed a bunch and I had to fight my way to the big gun. The Red Elite was tricky, even with the homing shots from this plasma thing, he could dodge them most of the time. Eventually, he and his grunts died. I dealt with the other Elites inside, who weren't much easier to be honest, respected Emil's corpse, and entered the Mag Cannon. I quickly realized that due to the number of phantoms and banshees trying to stop me, it would be impossible to destroy them all without taking damage. I reset once, but there was no point in doing it any more than that. I destroyed a few phantoms and whatnot until I got the signal to shoot down the Covenant cruiser. Keys and the Pillar of Autumn take off into space, a cutscene reveals that they arrived at the Halo, and I was given an impossible task. Survive. No matter how good you are, no matter how long you avoid damage, the game doesn't end until you take enough damage to die. Just like with the cannon, I reset once but it didn't matter. I took damage and ignored it. At this point, the challenge is over. I survived for as long as I could, about 8 minutes, but I eventually fell before the might of the Covenant, and did not beat Halo Reach without taking any damage. And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Halo Reach without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter if you give a shit. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.